emergency. How did you enjoy your days on emergency? On emergency? You mean waking up in the morning and going to work with Julie London? <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> no, emergency was a lot of fun. It was a little harder than saying they went that away. But uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Yes, I did. Bobby and Julie were dear friends, and the show ran for eight years. I mean, what a career there. And, uh, you were wonderful. Yeah, I enjoyed well, tell them the story about how you got the part now and what you said to Jack Webb for the first time. Uh, well, yo, well, okay. Uh, you know, uh, in 1970, I think it was 1971 we started, uh, I was still looking for a Western, and there wasn't a Western on the horizon. There wasn't going to be one, and there hasn't been, really, in television, worth a darn. But uh, uh, my agent called me one day, and he said, uh, Universal's doing a series, and Jack Webb is producing it, and he's created it, and it's called Emergency, and uh, he wants you to do the lead in it. And I said, what's it called? He said, it's Emergency. And I said, well, that sounds like a medical show. And he said, it is. I said, I don't want to do a medical show. I want to do a Western. And he said, Bob, don't you understand there's not a Western on the horizon and there's not going to be for a long time. You don't understand. Jack Webb wants you and nobody else in Hollywood to play Dr. Brackett in his brand new television series. And I said, well, I don't want to do it. But I've never met Mr. Webb. I, I, I admire him. He's a great guy and had a lot of series going at the studio. I said, I at least could go in and tell him face to face I don't want to do his show. And my agent said, well, go ahead if that's what you have to do. He said, they want to meet you at 7 o'clock after hours in Jack's office at Universal Studios, which I had done Laramie and Wagon Train at. So anyway, I uh, showed up, put a suit and tie on, went in, and uh, Jean, his secretary, was there, and she said, uh, he's on the phone, he'll be with you in a second. And I sat down, and all of a sudden the door popped open, Jack Webb sticks his head out, and he says, you're a hell of an actor, and I'll be with you in a minute. Well, that puffed me up. <laughs> but not enough to deter me from wanting to do his series. I thought, wow, that's a pretty wild thing happened. A couple of minutes later, she says, they're ready for you. Come in. I walked into his office. He has a big bar in the back of the office. All the brass are there. Lou Wasserman, Sid Scheinberg, his pet, as you know. And uh, the whole gang and Jack behind his desk. And I walk up to Jack. Jennings was there, of course. And I walked up to Jack and I said, Mr. Webb, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I appreciate your offer. I said, but I'm really not interested in doing a medical series. And Jack looked up at me and said, shut up and sit down. <laughs> Anybody watch the D.I.? Do you remember the movie he did, the D.I.? Well, that was Jack Webb. Shut up and sit down. And I went, wow. Oh, he said, do you drink? And I said, yeah. He said, go over to the bar and fix yourself a drink and come back and sit down. <laughs> and I went over and poured myself a good shot of vodka and uh, came over and sat down at that desk. And two hours later, I left that office with a two-hour world premiere movie sold with only 12 pages done, ready to shoot in three days with 15 episode, hour episodes sold to go after it. That's how persuasive he was and how lucky I was that That's he said, Bob shut up and sit down. Jack Webb was. I, uh, I had gotten out of the Army in 1955, and I bought the very first car that I ever had. I bought a uh, 55 Ford, blue Ford convertible, and that was my, my very first car. I think I paid uh, $400 for it with my mustering out pay or something like that. And, uh, and I, it was great. I drove it, and I had a great time, and I went on all the interviews, and finally... Uh, all of a sudden, I get signed to do Laramie, 1959. And we're going to have a guest star named Dan Durier. Does anybody know who Dan Durier is, the great motion picture actor? And who, Dan did tons of, of Laramies after that. But anyway, I was gonna, we're going in for wardrobe, and I'm going to have lunch. This is before we're going to start to shoot. And, uh, I'm going to meet him, and he said, let's have lunch together uh, after wardrobe. And we go into the commissary at Universal Studios, and this, now Dan Durier has been in the business a hundred years, a very, very smart man, knows what he's talking about. He's got this young, brand new actor that's going to start starring in a new television series, and he says to me, he said, Bob, he said, i got to tell you something, save your money. Now don't, you know, he said, I don't know what you're making right now, we weren't making a lot, six, when I say a lot, $600 a week is a lot of money in 1959. It's a lot of money anytime, but it's still not a lot of money. It's when you consider television. It's good, but I got it. It's, you know, the guys at Warner Brothers were making two hundred dollars a week working, but I had a good deal. And Dan said, "Don't 
go crazy now with your money. Don't go out and buy a new car. Don't do this, you know. Save your money. Take your time. Put it in the bank. Invest it. And he said, you, things will happen for you. And I said, yes, sir. Yeah, you're right. Yes, sir. He left, and I went to the Ford Company and bought the biggest 1959 T-Bird that you ever saw in your life. <laughs> my first car, brand new. $2,200. Oh my God! Thunder 1959 Thunderbird, four-seater, two-door, gorgeous car. What color was that? What color was your T-Bird? What color? Oh, yeah. White with a uh, green interior. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs>